Hi, I just finished doing a uh, airbag install on my uh, 95 Dodge Ram 2500 and I just want to start out with a few tips uh, before I get into the install. Uh, first, uh, make sure you read the directions really well before you get started. Uh, it's really important there's some things you want to do that are in a specific order. Uh, the second thing would be make sure you have uh, all your tools ready to go. Uh, you're going to need a 3 8 drill bit and you have it has to be at least that big because you have bolts going through a bracket that are that big and a 5 16 drill bit for uh, the air fittings that uh, they use to inflate the airbags and you're going to want to get uh, probably you're going to want to use a series of smaller to larger drill bits to get up to the 3 a size um, I was fortunate enough to have brand new uh, hardened uh, metal bits and they just really went right through that frame without a problem but if you try to do it with a big just one 3 a size it's, it's going to be miserable for you uh, and then if possible try to get a friend to help you with this there's a bunch of things that if you got two people it would just be so much easier uh, for me, I really don't have a whole lot of uh, mechanical aptitude, <clears throat> and this probably took me about four hours. And if I had uh, had all my tools ready and uh, had a friend to help me, it's probably a two-hour job. It's not really hard at all. Uh, it's just a little putsy and hard. To, some places are really hard to get to uh, by yourself, and, and it's hard to do some things by yourself because it's just the angles are tricky. So. Uh, hope this video helps you. Thanks for watching. Okay, today I'm going to install the Airlift uh, Load Lifter 5000 uh, airbag. And uh, the instructions are pretty straightforward. Uh, you get a couple of airbags, of course, brackets, a nice pile of hardware, a couple of different U bolt options depending on uh, your truck setup, uh, hardware to put the bag together. Uh, airline uh, pieces installed the airline and of course the most important thing uh, a decal to let everyone know that you have an airlift product so that's worth the purchase price right there I have a Dodge and of course being the lucky owner of a Dodge I get an extra step in my process this plastic piece has got to come out so there's seven reusable fasteners I got to punch out of there and then uh, put back in when the installation's done. Well, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know uh, it's never smooth sailing. So I'm taking the uh, loosening the lug nuts before I jack the truck up to make it easier to get uh, the tires off. And um, they're all coming really super easy. I'm like, wow, these aren't really that tight on here. And then I get the one, and now this looks like that because it just snapped right in the middle of me loosening it up. So, hooray. All right, that's one of the seven fasteners I got to remove to get this piece out and it says to use a pin to drive them out from the back side but that seems like a lot of work I'm just gonna use this little prior piece I'm going to have to punch them out. Alright, I got that tub out. And uh, I tried to punch it out, but it was like way too hard to get behind there and get any kind of angle on it. So uh, I used to work at a place where we sold those out. They're not real expensive to replace, so I'll just go pick some up. 
and put brand new ones in. Plus, I, I did get a couple out that were intact, but they look pretty, pretty much like not something you want to put back in there. And I've put the spring in, or the lifter in, and as you can see, um, there's two ways of that it goes in. One would be as if I didn't have that helper spring right there, but I do, so it's got to go over the top. And then there's a little lip on the bracket right here. Looks like that just rests, well that goes right over where that hole is for that cover I put in. Uh, so I will be putting two in, not three. Uh, anyhow, I got to measure and make sure uh, that distance is okay and I need to level this up a little bit and uh, be good to go. It's not too bad. Okay, well this is almost a how not to video instead of a, an instructional guide but basically what you have to do is this goes on the inside like that and then once that's on the inside this actually levels out nicely and I can get to this hole uh, to put that uh, faster back on although I need to put a spacer in I don't know how I'm gonna do that it, it comes with a nut and washer I may not be able to put that one anyways it'll just be the outside ones also uh, when you're assembling this bracket it has this little back lip on it and when I put this one together I put this on backwards so if I had put it in then it faces down and I wouldn't be able to get my nuts, uh, nuts tightened up so uh, it doesn't mention that in the instructions but it's just kind of something you're going to come across as you're putting it together so if you ever thinking to yourself why would I want to buy a Milwaukee uh, 3 8 ratchet instead of just you know using a drill well this is a way easier angle than trying to put a drill into this space right here you can forget that back bolt You can torque down on it too if you want to. What I'm going to do is uh, put some holes through the frame here to bolt this bracket on. And uh, this is really a lot easier if you got someone to help you. Uh, but what I've done is just use some pieces of wood uh, to shim that bracket down so that it's level. The top and bottom plates are level. And then I'm going to use this guy right here. I'm just going to make a dimple in the center of each one of these holes. And, uh, and that'll, one, mark the center, and two, keep my drill bit from sliding around. Yeah, that's what it looks like with the four bolts in. And uh, do the, the angle of my truck frame. On the left side, I had to go with the two holes on the bottom instead of one top and bottom like on the right side, and the directions say it's okay to do that. The driver's side is going to be a little trickier because the gas tank is right behind this bracket right here, so I have to be really careful when I drill through there. And then coming along right through here um, are some electrical wires and something else that I have to make sure I don't drill into. So, um, Instructions say make sure you look behind there before you drill, and uh, it's good advice because I have stuff. This screw right here, bolt, is the uh, where you're going to mount the spacer for the plastic weld panel that goes in here. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this in before you put the bolts in to the bracket because you're going to have to pull this down to get um, that bolt in right there. There's uh, this lip 
right here extends up behind here and you won't be able to get this bolt in uh, with that bracket in the way. That's the path I took to get to that explanation. Okay, I apologize if this gets a little shaky. I had to take the camera off the tripod to get this shot. But that's the airline and it goes behind the bracket right there. And basically I had to just get that in there uh, blind using just my fingers to feel the the little valve or the fitting and then force the hose into it. Uh, and then I just have it coming along the frame. Uh, you gotta be real careful because your muffler uh, I don't know if I'm getting it. Anyhow, the muffler's right there, so you got to keep the air hose away from the muffler. And then I just snake it to the back of the truck. What I'm going to do is I took the license plate off, and then there's a, I got a screw that goes right here and right here, and I'm just going to enlarge those holes. And then I'm going to take uh, the air fitting end of the hose and, and put it through those, and then just use the nut that holds the air fitting in place to hold my license plate on. Okay, that's what the uh, valve stem looks like coming through the license plate. I had enlarged the hole in the license plate a little bit, but it's on there nice and snug and uh, really wasn't too big of a deal to get installed. I'm getting ready to put in uh, that wheel well cover, and I film myself trying to do that, but I anticipate the amount of cursing is going to be spectacular and not really family entertainment. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in to tell you how big a pain in the neck it was uh, afterwards, because it was hard to get out. On the left is the one of the uh, rivets that I took out of the wheel well that actually didn't break when I pulled it out. And uh, what I decided to do was just go to Napa and pick up a bag, a replacement plastic push-in rivets. That was six bucks. Comes in a pack of 12, which works out perfectly because uh, each fender well holds seven, but that one in the middle has got the spacer in it, so I only needed 12, so it worked out pretty good. Okay, if you want to save yourself some aggravation, uh, my advice would be when you put this uh, wheel cover back in, the bolt that's sticking out, put the washer on that bolt before you put these pieces in because when you put this in it makes it tight and it's very hard to get that washer on there because this doesn't want to pull out. But once you get that washer on, then go ahead and put this these uh, rivets in on either side and what that's going to do is hold that cover up in place and not pull down on the boat on that bolt so then you can go ahead and put the uh, the nut on so um, hopefully this helps you I wish someone had said that to me it's probably hard to see but something that I was concerned about is uh, occurred with that uh, fender well being pushed out by that nut there isn't any clearance between the tire and uh, that piece right there so I'm gonna have to trim that and I'm gonna trim it on the other side before I put the wheel on okay here I am all done uh, I got my wheel well cover trimmed out not real pretty looking I actually had to make it a little bigger than I was going to because I stupidly did not test the air before I put everything back together and then when I aired it up to 30 pounds I could hear hissing so I had to make it a little bigger to get my arm up inside there so I can uh, get the hose inside that fitting a little better. Fortunately I didn't have to take everything apart and I was able to just jiggle it and get it sealed up so I'll test it a little bit and make sure it's still holding air but uh, overall not too bad of a project and if you're thinking about doing it yourself it's not too bad. I definitely recommend you get a friend. Take about half the time. Thanks for watching and hope this helped you.